No exaggeration, when it comes to spreading information and communicating, the internet is the greatest thing we have ever come up with. We can connect with millions of people, we can share and develop exciting new ideas, and we can even disrupt entire industries. All this is possible because everything you write, build, or share is free to flow across the whole network. You don't need any special deals or permission to reach millions. The internet has worked this way from the beginning because of a basic idea of fairness that's been named net neutrality. You get the entire internet with without any interference, no gatekeepers, or toll booths. So the internet is a free market and an open democracy, where our choices determine which things spread and become popular. This policy helped the internet develop into a huge part of our economy. But a new rule proposes to end net neutrality and give the power to censor and throttle the internet to companies like Verizon, AT&T, and Comcast. Here's how it works. Cable companies, also known as ISPs, sell us access to the internet. We pay them a monthly fee to get the entire internet. But the new rule says that ISPs no longer have to provide complete internet access. Instead, they'll be allowed to reduce our access and give preferential treatment to content that serves their business interests. Cable companies will be able to block sites, slow down sites, and charge sites fees for faster deliveries. They would become the first internet gatekeepers in US history, able to decide what sites and videos get seen. The economic, cultural, and political repercussions of this are enormous. The internet will look more like cable TV, with only certain sites included in the basic internet plan. For instance, content that companies like Comcast or Verizon own or invest in, like NBC or Yahoo. Startups and small business unable to make deals with ISPs will be relegated to a tier with slower speeds or higher costs. The next thing you write, share, or build will have little chance of reaching millions of people. You'll have to pay cable companies first to do that. They can even block or throttle all streaming music, video, or privacy tools. We'll never know what we were missing. If this is how the internet worked from the start, the blogging explosion that defined the early 2000s wouldn't have changed the face of media today. We might never have seen the rise of YouTubers, Snapchat, the SOPA blackout, Reddit, Bitcoin, Periscope, Candy Crush, or puppy cams. This threat is not hypothetical. They've been caught throttling or blocking Riot Games, FaceTime, Skype, and more, while serving their own content like Comcast's Xfinity Stream TV. The online innovation and creativity of the United States is the result of corporations and governments not having the power to control what's on the internet. They should never have the power to decide the next political uprising or how we communicate or pay for things or travel. That power is ours. This is our internet. Let's use the power we have before they take it away. Welcome to this special edition of GSM News. In this video, we will be introducing and summarizing the issue of net neutrality. Currently, the FCC is looking to move forward on removing key portions of the open internet order. From the upcoming decisions and those that have been made earlier this year, a flurry of fear-mongering has been released. It is our hope that this video will help begin clearing the air on a subject that is a concern to Americans on both sides of the political spectrum. Title II, which is commonly mistaken as net neutrality, is an attempt to equalize providers by reducing profitability to all and reclassifying the internet as a communication service instead of an information service. This encourages fewer startup companies entering the market, while empowering larger companies like Comcast, AT&T, or Google, which was legally classified a common carrier due to Google Fiber and Google Projects fee, and beholden to the new classification. The issue is further complicated by the fact that the terms net neutrality and Title II are being used as though they are synonymous by the general media and websites that enjoy your ad revenue when you visit them out of panic. Title II was created in the 1930s to regulate public utilities. The new Open Internet Order, or Net Neutrality, as it is also known, was implemented in 2015 and overruled the existing Open Internet Order at the time. This ruling is what led to the broadband providers falling under the jurisdiction of Title II. Prior to 2015 and the FCC taking complete control over service providers, those providers were covered and watched over by both the Federal Trade Commission, antitrust laws, and the FCC regulations. What this means is, should the FCC proceed to remove service providers from under the abuse of Title II reclassification, they will again be under the dual control of the FCC and FTC. The FCC's decision to bring internet providers under the draconian Title II regulations has affected us in more ways than you can imagine. 
Title II was designed to control and regulate the old copper wire communication companies. However, due to these regulations, it instead led to the creation of the government-sanctioned monopoly called Ma Bell. This occurred because Title II made it difficult for competitors to pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. Title II can potentially impact the infrastructure of smaller ISPs due to higher risk from increased regulations. The amount of lines being laid to provide wider access in areas is not feasible for larger companies can be hampered. Finally, the mainstream media has chosen to focus on one small aspect at a time in this complex issue in order to keep you enraged long term. They began this year by saying that taking service providers out from under the umbrella of Title II would suddenly allow them to steal your data and sell it to the highest bidder. And now they are pushing narratives that revolves around data throttling or prioritization. Due to this manufactured outrage, there were continuous calls for buying individual internet history from Republicans out of retribution. Yet, absolutely no one has been able to demonstrate this capability. Now, there are calls for protecting Title II regulations out of fear of protecting data throttling or prioritization. Yet, due to the reclassification of broadband providers as a common carrier service, corporations like AT&T were able to throttle services and Google is able to prioritize their websites such as Amazon due to the absence of antitrust laws being applicable in the US. Prior to 2015 and the implementation of Title II, there were numerous instances where companies were forced to be held accountable for attempting to violate net neutrality principles. With the implementation of Title II, in hopes of preserving net neutrality principles, we have effectively limited the ways to hold corporation giants accountable for these violations, while those same corporations call to keep this classification in place and continue their monopoly over the smaller ISPs or startups who simply can't afford the harsh regulations.